So, the last time I made a Warhammer video, I floated the idea of making my own custom Space Marine chapter. Now, of course, the Space Marines already come in a wide variety of flavors, all of which have long histories and bear striking color schemes that are instantaneously recognizable from across the table, so there's already a lot to choose from. However, part of the fun of interactive media is how you can make your own creations, right? Video games where you make your own characters, or tabletop games where you paint the miniatures are just begging you to use your creativity. But with the wild nature of homebrew creations, how do we reconcile with the fact that Warhammer 40k is, you know, a game with, like, rules and stuff? Thankfully, Games Workshop has us covered with successor chapters. You see, Space Marines are biologically modified super soldiers whose genetic blueprints can be traced to one of 20 Primarchs, the leaders of the original legions. All Space Marine chapters, be it first founding or successor chapters alike, trace their genetic blueprint to one of these Primarchs. Thus, creating your own Space Marine chapter is permitted under the rules as long as you connect it to one of these first chapters. You can be like, I know I'm calling them the Biker Mice, but they're a successor chapter of the White Scars, so they play like the White Scars. I mean, there's also rules that allow you to really make a custom chapter with their own special abilities, but you miss out on like the heroes, relics, and stratagems of the core chapters, so however you go, be sure to know the ups and downs of both ways. Either way, yes, your original the chapter Do Not Steal can be perfectly legal for tournament play as long as you declare clearly where your chapter's genetic blueprint comes from. In my case, I chose the original Emerald Green Boys, the Salamanders. The Salamanders are about as good guy as you can get from the Empire of Man, with a larger emphasis on humanitarian aid and honoring compassion over strength. Now, for some reason, a lot of people think I'm joking when I say that's the reason I chose the Salamanders, but it actually really is. But anyway, enough technical jibber-jabber, let's have some fun. In this video, I will be coming up with the color scheme and basic design for my own unique chapter, using this free demo model I got from the Games Workshop store as the base for my rough draft which is about as far as I plan to go in this video. Like I said before, this is a hobby and it should be fun. So to have some extra fun, how about I base my successor chapter's color scheme on something that's about as far from the grim darkness of the future as possible? Like magical girl shows? And I don't mean the deconstructions that are all morose and stupid, I mean the ones that are made in earnest for children, with bright saccharine colors and childish themes, about as far from the gringy grimdark as you can get. Now, the obvious choice here would be Sailor Moon, the most well-known and popular magical girl show. However, a quick Google search reveals that this very popularity has caused a lot of people to have had the same idea already. Aside from a number of takes on that Sailor Moon redraw meme, there are others who have patterned their army after these character designs. So, since we want to tread new ground rather than following others, we need to look elsewhere. Although I have to say there's a neat touch here where they pattern the Aquila armor like the ribbon on the front of the outfit and that just that's just, you know, chef's kiss, chef's kiss. Well then, how about Precure? Precure, originally known as Pretty Cure, is put simply Power Rangers for girls. Both involve teams of teenagers who transform into colorful heroes to fight giant monsters and save the day. They also both have rotating casts, where each season of the show features an all-new story with its own cast of characters. I've actually taken to calling this method the Power Rangers system because it allows them to avoid drowning the series in all sorts of lore and continuity and makes it easy for new, especially young viewers, to get into it. Every generation has their Power Rangers team after all. However, unlike Power Rangers, the heroes of Precure don't use giant robots, but instead attack with magical explosions, and rather than using the combining robots you see in Power Rangers, instead combine those magical powers together to create catastrophic effects, such as summoning the image of a goddess who then conjures a power fist to wreck shop? Okay, maybe this works in the 40k universe after all. I cast fist! Ah! 
A Google search of Precure Warhammer gets us a picture of the original Cure Black and Cure White fighting some orc boys, and a search for Precure Space Marines gets us images of Cure Marine and Cure Cosmo, which I guess is a synonym for space. Aw oh, man, and Cure Marine is basic ultramarine blue. Although let's not kid ourselves, Erica would play orcs. Anyway, we clearly have some new territory to explore here, and as luck would have it, there is actually a season of Precure based on space travel. 2019's Star Star Twinkle Precure, the season with Cure Cosmo in it, oddly enough. Star Twinkle is honestly one of the better seasons, in my opinion, just dripping with the energy of old Japanese sci fi B movie schlock, which I just find irresistible. One episode, they might be dealing with problems at school, the next, they're using donuts to bid on an ancient artifact in a space casino. It is wild. It also has a lot of fun with these sci-fi tropes, like how does first contact with an alien stepping out of their spaceship usually go? Are they a brilliant intelligence here to enlighten us, or are they a devastating warhawk here to conquer us? Or are they a teenage girl who promptly vomits all over their shoes due to motion sickness? <laughs> This here is Lala Hagaromo, the star of our show, an alien from the planet Saman. The funny thing about Lala is, despite being an alien, she's actually a completely ordinary person. Heck, she's technically a janitor who pilots a garbage scow. Yes, those girls are bedazzling a garbage truck, and yes, that is hilarious. Still, we loves us our space janitors on this channel, so we will be using her hero form, Cure Milky Way, as the basis of our color scheme. It's got a nice strong teal as its primary color, mixed with a bit of pink and yellow. There's also a bit of this like fun fashionable asymmetry with how only one of her legs has a stocking on it, so maybe we can work that in as well. Hey, if Games Workshop is allowed to copy ideas from elsewhere, so am I. So here's the color scheme I started developing, but soon after I actually started painting the miniatures through my Imperium subscription, I realized that I had made this color scheme way too complex by trying to incorporate all the different shades. You'll find that most of the official chapter paint schemes are deliberately incredibly simple, both to make them easier to paint and to help make the units and their facings more clear, so I needed to reduce this color scheme to like three or four colors. After fixing these problems, I moved on to the painting tests. It's time for some arts and crafts. Now, when it came to naming my chapter, I tossed around a few ideas based on the results of the lore explosion I experienced when I threw these two franchises into my mental Hadron Collider, but after a little more Google searching, I discovered that the perfect name, one that made more sense and wasn't terribly pretentious, was just sitting there waiting for me to take it. So without further ado, allow me to show you the first draft of my color scheme for The Shooting Stars. Yeah, I know! There wasn't a space marine chapter named The Shooting Stars before now. And despite the use of bright hues, we have a surprisingly aggressive color mix featuring teal, pink, cream, and gold with a rogue splotch of purple forming the belt. This is in order to simulate the purple on Lala's bloomer pants. Now we just need a symbol. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, hey, that works. A star with a halo around it. Simple yet distinct. I like it. And yeah, I know this paint job is amateur hour. Some of it is the cheap grainy primer. Some of it is me learning the behavior of some new paints. Most of it is my own incompetence. But seeing this paint scheme live, it's actually pretty striking. It's also the first scheme I've seen that makes strong use of asymmetrical design. I mean, I have seen other custom chapters that use split or even harlequin color patterns, but those are technically all still symmetrical. Asymmetry causes a sort of organic off-balance feel that conveys a sense of motion, which actually works pretty well for these guys. I can't wait to try out this color scheme on some of the more dynamically posed marines. The shooting stars were kind of created by accident when a strike cruiser carrying a salamander battle group got stuck on the only habitable planet in the middle of a raging warp storm for 1,000 years. As a result, they are big on space travel and show a great deal of enthusiasm when it comes to exploring the frontiers or caring for planets other space marines have looked over. In their chapter culture, space marines are heroes who should serve the people and live by a code of honor and self-sacrifice. Their name describes them pretty well. Shooting stars, cosmic entities implying space travel that represent hope, miracles, and 
perhaps naivete. A thousand years trapped in safety may have given them a brighter outlook, but when this comes crashing against the grim dark reality of the universe, they surprisingly have a nasty habit of causing miracles. Maybe I'll go into their chapter history another time, that lore explosion gave me a lot to work with. Anyway, on to paints. While I didn't use it on this marine, I found a good spray primer in the form of Rust-Oleum Seaside Satin, which is a pretty straight up match for what I have in mind. So while it might not be ideal for painting the miniatures, it's still a tool for the belt if I need to cover a wide area, such as with vehicles or terrain as seen here. As for Citadel paint, the closest I saw was Temple Guard Blue, which when compared to the Seaside Satin is, yep, pretty blue. It's also the color of Alpha Legion and the Thousand Suns, and I want to avoid confusion here. A good custom chapter stands out from the pack, which means that for this paint job, I actually set aside the Citadels in favor of Reaper paints. I know, Games Workshop, I love ya, but as a card-carrying Texan, I gotta represent. These guys are from my hometown, I just gotta. Anyway, Reaper paints are quite the different animal from the Citadel paints, and learning their flow and behavior has been part of the experience of getting this together. An important thing to note about them is that there are two major types of Reaper paints, the Bones paints and the Core paints. Generally, you want the Bones paints, as they have the high pigments and coverage you expect from these sorts of paints designed for their Bones miniature line. They are a bit more difficult to control than Citadel paints, but unlike Citadel, they had the colors I wanted. For example, Bones Siren Song, a much greener teal shade that more closely matches our seaside satin, if a smidge darker. We combine this with Bones Yellow Mold for the right arm and leg, and Core Punk Rock Pink for the details, with Bones Tendril Pink to act as a base to make it work more properly. For the belt, I have Bones Witchcraft Purple, which might be a bit too dark to be honest, and Pure White for our details. Also, yeah, I lied. I use Citadel Retributor Armor for the trim, but it does pop really boldly against the teal and helps make the colors look less flat. I like it! This really works! The colors are popping, they aren't clashing at all, this is a very distinct and clear look. That said, I already see places where I would make some changes. I think the right tacit should be the same cream as the rest of the limb to give it better color linearity. Maybe the elbow too. And I think the retributor armor on the star halo should probably replace with a sort of canary yellow that stands out at any angle. By all means, feel free to mention any ideas you might have to spruce up the design, aside from my own personal lack of polish. Believe me, I am watching all of the tutorials. Things like wash tones or tricks to help make better versions of what I attempted to freehand are fair game though. But I still think this is a successful proof of concept. The Siren Song is a bit of a darker tint than the Seaside Satin, but their shades are similar enough that you'd have to squint to tell, so I think using this spray color for my Rhino should still work just fine. So that's it, a look at the shooting stars. Granted, my painting isn't terribly ambitious, as I haven't even used a wash on it yet, but I have a whole lineup of figures that I plan on painting up in this scheme, using the Imperium Magazine paint guides to help lay down the colors. I'll be refining the details, fixing up the color scheme, and practicing with these paints a bit more. The star-shaped logo should make it easy to make accessories and conversion pieces if I want to bling out my officers and important characters. That, however, is going to take longer to do. I am going to be sticking to fairly basic coloring techniques for now, as that's about what my skill level will allow, so it might be some time before we hear from the shooting stars again. Still, I'd maybe attach it to a lore dump. I've kinda gotten everything covered, from their origin story, to their heroic characters, to their relations to other groups, to even why the right arm and leg are a different color. But until that time comes, this is Kodok signing off. Chalum Explicatio.